the belt's not making any noise and there's no visual sign of damage, does that mean the belt's okay till the next time you see this customer? If you need to think about the answer to that one, then you need to watch this edition of The Trainer. The accessory drive system is a wear item, just like tires and spark plugs. And like tires and spark plugs, it requires routine inspection and maintenance, replacing the components when they are worn outside of their service limits. Failure to replace a worn accessory drive belt or component could lead to premature wear on all the accessory components that the drive belt touches. The alternator, the AC compressor, the power steering pump, and on some models, the water pump. Many belt manufacturers recommend inspecting the accessory drive belts at 60,000 miles and replacing the belt and tensioner at 90,000 or at the OEM specified service interval. But professional techs know that wear can be accelerated by a variety of conditions. Do your customers a favor, inspect the belt every time they bring the vehicle in for service. Catching a worn belt early will help ensure that the accessory drive components lead a long and healthy life. Inspect the belt during operation. Look for any signs of fluttering or excessive movement of the tensioner. Listen for any obvious abnormal noise. Belt flutter is caused by incorrect belt length, a worn tensioner, a modified accessory drive system, or a wrong belt application. Belt flutter leads to inefficiency in the drive that can lead to excess heat transferred to the drive system component bearings. It can also impact the efficiency of the driven components. Last, but certainly not least, it creates tremendous excess load on the next following component as the belt continuously snaps from loose to tight and back like cracking a whip. Next, Turn off the engine and inspect for obvious damage or contamination from oil or coolant leakage. This is an important step. Belts that are contaminated can fail prematurely and can even lead to catastrophic engine damage like the kind suffered by some BMW models made in the early 2000s. The oil filter housing on these engines, located above the belt, often leaked, causing the belt to jump and become entangled in the crank pulley. In severe cases, the belt was actually sucked into the engine through the front crank seal. You can imagine what happened from there. A quick note on visual damage. Most serpentine belts today use a different kind of material called EPDM and will not show physical wear like the old neoprene belts did. Don't expect to see cracks or missing chunks like this unless something is seriously wrong. On these, the belt ribs wear over time, taking away the wedge effect that is responsible for efficiently transferring power from the crankshaft to the components and reducing the system's ability to get rid of debris or water, which could cause the belt to hydroplane. EPDM belts are checked with a special gauge like this one from Gates. Every belt manufacturer makes a version of this tool and they should be readily available from your jobber or your parts supplier. The Gates tool is inserted into the rib side of the belt and held in place with light tension. Next, attempt to rock the tool in a back and forth motion. Any noticeable movement indicates where in the belt ribs and grooves and the belt and tensioner should be replaced as a set. Belt slippage is the worst thing that can happen in an accessory drive system. Slippage causes increases in the heat load, and that heat is passed on to the accessory driven components, accelerating their wear. Belt wear as little as 5% can impact the accessory drive system. That's why it is so important to routinely check the condition of the drive belt. It can also lead to noise complaints but noise complaints can be caused by more than a worn belt. 
Felt noises can be classified as a chirp or a squeal. Typically, chirps are rhythmic in nature, while squeals are constant in tone. Chirp is caused by misalignment. Belts can only handle about one degree of misalignment. For every degree above that, it generates an additional 30 degrees Fahrenheit of heat load in the belt. Of course, that heat load is passed on to the accessory drive components, specifically the bearings in those drive components. Misalignment can be parallel, angular, or a result of excess play in the driven pulley shaft. Noises caused by misalignment typically occur in the belt's shortest span. This is especially true when the second pulley is driven by the smooth side of the belt. Squeal, on the other hand, is caused by loss of tension. Loss of tension can be caused by a worn belt or a worn tensioner or a combination of the two. You can use the spray bottle test to determine what type of noise you're dealing with. Perform this test under the same conditions where belt noise concerns occur. If on a cold engine, perform the test on initial startup, for example. Begin by identifying the shortest span. Spray the water stream on the belt ribs where they enter the second pulley in the span. Remember, water acts as a lubricant, but don't use anything but water to perform this test. If the noise gets louder as the belt is sprayed, it's a loss of tension causing the problem. If, on the other hand, the noise quiets and then returns, the problem is misalignment at the two pulleys you are testing. If the noise remains the same, look for the next shortest span and repeat the test until you've identified the noise source. If you do determine that misalignment is the issue, then you can use a laser alignment tool like this one from Gates to help you pinpoint the component that's causing the problem. And since I have the belt off, I'd like to show you something that can help you determine either the correct replacement belt or even whether or not the vehicle you're servicing has the right belt installed. It's called the PK number. The PK number is a worldwide standard metric belt measurement. The number is listed after the OEM or aftermarket part number on most belts. In this case, the PK number is 6 PK1256, where 6 is the number of ribs on the belt, P means metric, K means automotive based on the SAE J1459 standard, and 1256 is the effective length in millimeters. But be careful, effective length is not the same as actual outside circumference. You can estimate outside circumference by adding 14 millimeters to the effective length given. You can then use a belt's catalog size listing to select a replacement belt. In this example, you'll need a six red belt that is 1270 millimeters plus or minus three millimeters in actual outside circumference. It's also important to inspect the tensioner. Just like the belt, the tensioner is a wear item and it can wear in one of two areas. First, it can wear in the internal damper, and second, it can wear in the pivot bushing inside the tensioner assembly. The dampener takes over a billion shock loads over a 100,000 mile lifespan. Wear in the damper allows excess movement of the tensioner arm, resulting in reduced tension on the belt, and that can lead to loss of tension and possible belt flutter. Reduced belt tension leads to increased heat in the belt. This heat is passed on to the components. Some movement of the tensioner is normal, but excess movement is indicative of a worn damper. Wear in the damper also puts excessive load on the tensioner pivot bushing, accelerating wear there. And as the pivot bushing wears, the angle of the tensioner to the belt is impacted, causing misalignment and resulting noise. Remember, when you're servicing the accessory drive system, the OEMs design it just like that, as a system with the belt and tensioner as married components. If you find a fault or wear in one, it's always a good idea to replace the other. And when you do, choose good quality components. Many of the so-called value-added tensioners, for example, 
don't include a dampener, but rely on the spring alone to dampen the shock load. This, of course, means that there's additional shock load being missed and passed on to the accessory drive components. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of The Trainer. Thanks for watching. I'm Pete Meyer. See you next month.